with pitchforks, knives, and machetes going at the uh, at the Capitol buildings. Right? <clears throat> they won't let the pitch pitchfork moment. Welcome back, and we have Harley Schlanger on for another amazing hour with Lush Foundation and. Uh, you know, I spent yesterday going up to Disneyland. And by the way, I want to make a quick comment. Uh, Disneyland, unfortunately, I think it's a big ripoff. I, my daughter loves it because she's 21. She just got uh, she loved Disneyland. In fact, I, she was so hyped up it was hard to get her to bed at to midnight, and she got a lot of rides. But I think everybody and their dog was there. It was like the most busy. I, I didn't go to the actual park. My son and and our her shipping lady went and took Kelsey. But they didn't even advertise that the number of the rides are missing. Now, that's the same thing that's going on in the world. The bankers are not telling you that a lot of the rides are closed down, which means no credit. They're not telling you that even if they do a bail-in, that it'll only stay the ultimate execution of the world economy by about two weeks. And what it'll do is it'll cause what's called, I call a pitchfork moment where people will go nuts. You know, like Carol Salenti say, when people lose it all, they lose it. Uh, and the lose it all moment's coming. The lose it all moment is being shown with shadows in, in Greece and Spain and around the world with countries wanting to split off like Cordoba, Spain, uh, Scotland, and now of course uh, the Crimea, which they know under the boot of, of the IMF and the Euro, uh, austerity fascism means not enough money to get gasoline even to get to work, let alone buy food. We're talking about the end of civilization as we know it and the maniacs like Obama and their current behavior isn't just greed, isn't just narcissism, it's mega omnicidal evil right from the pit of Hades and Satan. And if anybody doesn't understand that Satanism involved here, and again, even LaRouche will say this, that you're not dealing with just greedy people or insane people, you're dealing with satanically energized beings that are avatared by non-human entities. That's the facts. Now, as much as you want to not believe that, Turn off the radio, walk away ignorant, and face the music because when you hold your hands up and you see that flash and all the bones in your hand are visible without an x-ray machine, that last moment you go, oops, could we have stopped Obama and got the nuclear football away? Could we have impeached him? Could we have stayed the banks and brought back the Fed Reserve, uh, got rid of the Fed Reserve and taken, making the money to our treasury? Could we have stopped foreign entanglements and aggravating war? I mean, do you not think that Russia will deploy nuclear missiles in Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba? Do you think we, this is called Cuban Missile Crisis 2 that we're starting right now because we deployed nuclear missiles in Turkey before Cuba put their missiles in Cuba? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I can tell you what will happen. Nuclear annihilation. And I can say right now as a, not only as a, as a medical doctor, as a student of the Bible, and literally called by the Most High God to speak as an apostle prophet, I can tell you this is the end of human civilization unless we, number one, pray. Get our senses like Linda LaRouche and his organization and do something for God's sake to stop this insanity. Okay, up to you now, Harley. That little intro. <laughs> well, let me let me try and uh, order things a little differently here because. Well, I just want to get the. I, 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 I call the, 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 your, the calling your orders. I think that. All. Oh yeah, I, I know it, it, it. It's that desperate. I mean, I I am literally screaming from the top of the hills to say, "Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God!" And the behavior of Obama, every move he makes, every word he says, aggravates the situation more. Well, let me let me let me put it together in a in a slightly different way <clears> because, look, we are headed toward. The end of civilization. The question is, will it be drawn out? Will it be quick? Or can we reverse it? And so those are the three options. Now, what you brought up, we were talking about this before the program, the question of bail-ins. What's clear now, if you listen to what Janet Yellen said, if you look at the commentary on Janet Yellen about the end of tapering, about what happens after the Federal Reserve stops giving the banks uh, billions of dollars each month, uh, what happens if the interest rates start to go up? Virtually every economist who's not an apologist for Obama or the European Union will tell you that we're headed toward another crisis that will be bigger than 2008. Only this time, governments cannot do the bailouts. It's politically not feasible, and secondly, it economically won't work. Now, they're reduced, therefore, to either do something sane which is impose Glass-Steagall, uh, break up the big banks, uh, write down the, the uh, so-called valuations of the financial paper of the investment banks, 
and protect the, the savings banks and the depository institutions so we have mechanisms through which we can extend credit. That would be right. the same thing to do. If they don't do that, the only option they have on the table now is what's called bail-in. Now, bail-in does not simply mean that they steal the deposits. It means they'll steal virtually anything. But here's the problem. As Thomas Honig, the vice chairman of the FDIC, has pointed out, that if you get to the point where there's a meltdown of one of the two big-to-fail banks, there's not enough cash in the deposit base of those banks to cover the outstanding uh, uh, liabilities which right. means they would have to turn to other banks. Right now, two-thirds of lending is bank-to-bank, -bank, which means banks backing up each other by buying each other's bad financial assets. Only one-third goes to non-financial institutions, and much of that is uh, recreation, entertainment, and so on. So what it means is there's nothing being produced. So the banks don't have enough to... One bank would not have enough to defend itself, other banks would not extend credit because they're in a similar situation, just like September 2008. But this time, the whole system would go. Right. Now, if it didn't happen that way, the other thing is that why would you, if your money is in Citibank, leave your money in Citibank if Bank of America just stole all your deposits in a bailout? Right. So, as you said, you maybe buy a week or two weeks. Now, that's why Lyndon LaRouche has said that when you get to the point of bail-in, you're looking face-to-face -face with the danger of thermonuclear war. And this is something that people don't understand. The financial system's about to explode or implode, and the people who are, have their fingers on the nuclear button are not unwilling to launch nuclear war because they're already on record as supporting wiping out six-sevenths of the human race. Right, And this is what you mean by satanic, what LaRouche means by satanic. People like the Queen of England, people like uh, Barack Obama, who's a puppet of them, people like Dick Cheney, who I always described as the dirty dick of the old queen. Well, it, we, I, we call him the Prince of Darkness. In fact, when he entered the White House, he wanted to be addressed as the Prince of Darkness, believe it or not. Well, what you have with these people is no compassion, no empathy, none of what we would call the Judeo-Christian view of man. Their view is that some of them are like the gods of Olympus, like Zeus. And as Zeus did in the great play by Aeschylus, Prometheus, when he tired of the human race, he wiped it out and started over again. These guys have that same intent, that same mentality. Aeschylus understood the problem of oligarchical civilization. Now, we in the United States today are naive, we're ignorant, we're dumbed down. We don't understand that there are actually people who don't think the way we do about concern for the poor or the elderly or the sick, but they just as soon see them all wiped off the face of the earth. And right. because of that failure to think through the implications of this crisis, we're saddled with a president who is committed, if necessary, to push the button. And after the break, I'll tell you what just happened in Brussels, which makes it absolutely clear that Obama is a genocidal lunatic who's trying to pull the rest of the world in to support him. Yeah, exactly. And of course, they want more commitment from Europe, which is already bankrupt, to put in more military. And uh, even Germany's balking at that because they know even the strongest economy in Europe cannot afford to put more money into the military. In fact, it turns out that they're draining the, the, the coffers so badly in Europe that they can't pay doctors and nurses in places like Greece or Spain in order to even get to work, let alone to actually uh, run a larger military system to come against the Russians. Well, and also all they're going to lose their oil and gas. Well, Russia will turn off the tap. And I think people don't understand that uh, Russia is, as we speak, three moves ahead, already deploying nuclear uh, and forces in Venezuela. So the next major move you can see Obama wanting to do is to invade Venezuela, five trillion barrels of oil. We're going to be smack up against the nose of Russian forces there in Venezuela. Cuban Missile Crisis 2 coming, part two on the way. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, you mentioned a number of things on the break. I think we need to 
openly discuss on air. Go ahead. Well, let's start with the updated developments on, on Ukraine. Uh, Putin moved, and there's nothing the West can do about it. These sanctions could harm the Russian economy, but the Russians will turn them around and harm Europe even more. And oh, yeah. there's a, a real reaction now in Germany in particular, uh, where one supporter of Merkel said, look, if you're going to bail out Ukraine, you'd better tell the German people that, because it's going to cost more than Greece. Others are just saying that we'll lose our exports, we'll lose uh, necessary uh, oil and gas. But here's what I want to really highlight just now, because it gets to the question of the satanic nature of Obama. Yeah. Obama went to Europe, and he said, we're saving the Ukrainians, we're supporting their uh, freedom and independence. The Maidan Square revolution was a revolution of rising expectations against the corruption of a, a pro-Russian dictator. And Putin reacted by breaking international law by seizing Crimea. Now, wow. there are about 30 things wrong with that, but that, let's just look at what Obama then did. He was at a conference. There were 50 nations there to discuss how to protect the world from potential nuclear war or nuclear terrorism. Now, while he's there defending the Ukrainians, the dragon lady behind the throne in Ukraine is uh, Yulia Tymoshenko. She was the prime minister in the early part of, uh, from 2000 to 2004 or so, and she was thrown out by an uprising of Ukrainians because she was tied to gas oligarchs who were skimming money off every gallon of gasoline sold to Ukrainian people. She was right. called Including the gas a, princess. They said that she had at least $200 million in just one deal, skimmed yeah. her herself. So she was probably a billionaire oligarch herself, and she was thrown in prison by Yanukovych for that. Now, her top guy is this guy, uh, Yats, the Yatsenko, who's the yeah. choice of yeah. uh, uh, Victoria Nuland. Right. Now, she was on, now, here's the thing. She was on the phone a few days ago with a man named Nestor Shufri, who is the deputy director of Ukraine's National Security Council. And in that phone conversation, she said that, quote, it's about time we grab our guns and go kill those damn Russians together with their leader. She said that she would personally like to do it. Now, then she went on to say that, that uh, she was asked, well, what are we supposed to do with the 8 million Russians living in Ukraine? And she said, we should kill them with nuclear weapons. We should burn the ground of Russia. So here's Obama. And she said something even more colorful, which is a, she said something even more colorful, which well, is a curse word said, we're not going to say. But yeah, she said, if I had a machine gun, I'd like to shoot that mother effer's head and blow it up. Referring to Putin. Wow. I mean, now, here's, so much for her uh, halo hairdo, hey? Well, Bill, here's the point. There's Obama parading around saying we're going to save the world from nuclear terrorism, nuclear weapons. When he and NATO people are talking about providing nuclear weapons to a Ukrainian government in which four of the 20 top people are known open pro-Nazis, where the person behind Yatsenko, behind the scene, is this Timoshenko, who's on the phone talking about nuking Russians. And then what did Obama do? He insisted that the leaders join him in playing a video game about what do you do in the case of nuclear terrorism. Now, uh, Cameron joined in with Obama. Angela Merkel looked at them and, and shook her head in disgust and walked away. Here you have supposedly the leaders of the world who are playing a nuclear chicken game with Russia, the one other country in the world that can stand up to our nuclear capability. Who And we're supporting people who want to kill Russians and openly say it. And then Obama says, well, Russia did what no country can do in the 21st century, when in fact he just did it in Libya and he tried to do it in Syria and would have gone down in history as a mass murder had Putin not stepped in to cool out the Syrian crisis by getting an agreement there. So when we talk about a satanic leader... This is not hyperbole. This is the nature of Barack Hussein Obama. 
I, I would put a title on this man, and I would say, without a lot of wavering, that I would call him a false prophet of doom. Uh, this is a man who tries to put on the messianic shroud, but in fact, he's a devil. Well, you know, that's usually what you find for people who proclaim to be messiahs. Remember Obama, yeah. had, there was this uh, cartoon, not cartoon, but a, an actual ad made by someone supporting McCain in 2008 with talking about Obama as the one. He sees himself that way. <laughs> yeah. But you oh, see, yeah, he now, does. He's got a messianic viewpoint. And n- yeah. not only that, with this latest movie, remember the movie about the Son of God that had the series? The guy that was playing the actor, the older actor that was playing Satan, looked like a dead ringer for Obama's father. I mean, or if this was Obama dressed up to look like Satan, it's like, oh, my gosh. So they actually cut some of those scenes when they made the movie version that's now in the theaters. Well, what you have, and, and this is what people really have to think about, is that... It's not at all an exaggeration to say that there was a U.S.-directed coup in Ukraine that took advantage of a lot of well-meaning people who were frustrated, who were suffering, who were out demonstrating. But those that was used as the sea in which a small group of fish who were armed terrorists uh, wearing Nazi armbands moved in, chased away the existing government, and took power. Now, Yanukovych may have been somewhat corrupt, but he was a democratically elected leader who was overthrown by an armed coup. Now, Obama immediately not only asserted that that armed coup was legitimate, but he said that Putin had no right to move into Crimea to protect the Russian people there who were being threatened by this these right-wing neo-Nazi operatives from Ukraine. Now, once that happened, four of the 20 people who got into the cabinet were part of either the Right Project or Svoboda, which are openly pro-Hitler parties. Then they tried to ban Russian as a language in Ukraine, even though 25% or so, 20 to 25% of the population is Russian ethnicity, Russian background. But then they they voted to cut the pensions of Ukraine by 50%. For what reason? To get a loan from the International Monetary Fund. That's who we're supporting in Ukraine. Right. And so... By the way, the IMF makes its money out of thin air and then collateralizes against real assets, strip mines it. I mean, we have had this well-known for years. This is how the IMF and the World Banks work. They create money out of thin air, collateralize it against real assets, and then strip mine the countries that they, 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 they basically destroy. Well, it's not terrible. only that, when, when they provide a loan, it's, it goes straight to pay off the debt to the banks, and it just adds to the debt to the country. Right. This, this is something that uh, you might see uh, a 1920 or 30s movie in America about loan sharks, and it was considered yeah. a crime back then. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, another amazing revelation on the break. Uh, please proceed. I mean, uh, this is this is crazy. What's going on between Diane Feinstein and Obama and Eric Holder, etc.? Uh, let's go through the details. Well, let's let's start by saying that I'm not a big Die Fi fan. I, I've seen Diane Feinstein defend the president on the NSA. She's defended him on drones. She's defended him on almost every intelligence matter. So she's been a, a really pretty terrible figure in my eyes. But what changed? Well, what happened is that you came up to a point where her staffers were being investigated for criminal action by the Justice Department on behalf of the CIA. Now, here's the story. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Intelligence, was doing an investigation into the torture policy. And the CIA agreed to set up a computer in CIA headquarters where some of the files would be downloaded related to that so the staffers could come in and read them. Now, at a certain point, when it became clear that they were going to do a very damning report on Cheney and the policy, they would have really gone far beyond what we've heard so far about the torture policy. The CIA started withdrawing deleting documents from the computer. And as they were doing this, there was a protest raised by some of the staffers, and there may have even been some files that were stolen by the staffers. No one's clear whether they did that or not. But what then happened 
is that when Feinstein was trying to negotiate with the CIA and with the Justice Department to get documents declassified, President Obama said he would not declassify the documents and asserted executive privilege. At that point, as things were getting hotter and hotter, the CIA decided to launch a criminal investigation through the Justice Department into the staffers. And when this finally got to Feinstein's desk, she finally said, this is too much. And she went out and denounced it and said that Obama's got to release the files that are classified, that the CIA has to stop attacking her staffers. And then what happened was even more interesting. Uh, Representative Sensenbrenner, a Wisconsin Republican, is one of the authors of the, uh, um, what's it called, the Patriot Act, uh, who's acknowledged that it's been used too far and he wants to change it. Sensenbrenner was briefed by Feinstein and he came out and said there were at least two constitutional violations here that could be impeachable if, if Obama knew about them. One, the CIA is not allowed to operate in the U.S., inside the U.S., but they were. No kidding. <laughs> now, two, the executive branch, through the Justice Department, interfered with a congressional investigation. Now, Obama, of course, has used his executive power to override Congress. He just did it again on the health care bill. But this right. is a case where the, the Constitution gives the power to the, the uh, legislative branch to oversee the policies of the executive branch. And here's a case where the executive branch intervened in that and said, we're not going to let you see the documents, we're not going to let you produce the report, we're not going to let you attack the previous administration. Now, that's an impeachable offense. And a Democratic congressman from California, Adam Schiff, backed up Feinstein. Now, Pelosi then came forward trying to run a little cover there, saying, oh, my goodness, this is very bad. I sure admire Dianne Feinstein for her courage. But then, of all people, Harry Reid, who up to this point has been a loyal Obama supporter, as loyal as you can be, he came out and sided with Feinstein and said, look, Obama better release these files. Now, here's the important wow. thing. Is that, that's a big wow. Isn't that something else? Well, this is huge. That's, now, here's that's major. The, here's the, here are the two points. One is Obama's intervention on behalf of Dick Cheney is very difficult for people to take. But then take the first part, the first half hour of our program where we were talking about Ukraine. Some of these Democrats realize that Obama may get us into nuclear war uh, <laughs> no kidding. on behalf of a regime change policy, which was the neocons policy. So we're seeing right. some of the Democrats pull back. Now then the third factor is the Keisha Rogers campaign. And by the way, we should talk about getting Keisha back on your program maybe next week. We um, Keisha, yeah, that's a good idea. Excellent Keisha idea. Keisha getting into a runoff in Texas for the U.S. Senate, Democratic nomination for the U.S. Senate, on the specific grounds of impeaching President Obama. And then add one other factor. There are eight or nine Democratic seats in the Senate that are up for grabs. If the Republicans win six of them, they'll take the Senate and keep the House. There are some Democrats who are saying, we've had a little bit too much Obama. Maybe we should consider ways of reining him in. Now, you can't rein him in because he's not uh, it, conscious it's, of what it's he's too doing. Late, uh, well, it's not even that. Yeah, first thing, he doesn't oh, have there's the, nothing uh, to rein he, in. He, he, he's a synthetic character who is largely a puppet for the interests of the financial elite who are out to destroy the United States. It's not as though he's going exactly. to say, oh, yeah, in other words, made a mistake. Yeah. Right. In fact, there's not the substance there. He doesn't have a conscience. He doesn't have an intellect. He doesn't have actually have a personality. When we hear David John Oates talk about reverse speech, he describes Barack Obama as a separate entity within the so-called multiple did or dissociative identity disorder personalities that are present in this flesh called uh, Barry Satoro, a.k.a. Barack Obama. So we're not dealing with a real person. We're dealing with no, an and entity. That's why, and, and that's why this issue of impeachment is so important. Now, here's one other point I want to make on this. You know, we've been looking at the uh, Republicans talking over and over about how anti-Obama they are, yet they've done nothing. They've talked about it and done nothing. Now, what happens if some Democrats decide they're going to move to get rid of Obama? Now we've got a possibility to impeach him. 
Now, the interesting thing is not will there be uh, the votes. If Democrats initiate it, they'll have the votes to impeach him in the House and then throw him out in the Senate. And we don't have to wait for the 2014 elections because of what he's doing. But then the question is, what will the policies be to replace Obama? What happens when we stop bailing out banks and invest in the economy? What's the best way to end the spying and the corruption of the CIA and the regime change policy? There are easy ways to do it. But we're going to need to have a discussion about this, which so far has been suppressed, because if you attack Obama, you're accused of somehow being racist or uh, uh, right-wing or uh, unbalanced, or they call Keisha crazy, because they say, how can an African-American be against Obama? Well, I tell you, a whole lot of white people were against Bush. Exactly. Uh, I, I think that the race card is way overused. Uh, America is is a perfect example of not a race nation. You might have used that 40 or 50 years ago, uh, trailing pieces of that, but they can't do that nowadays. It's just not rational. What Obama's done is he's actually done things that no white man would ever get away with. Yeah, that's you know, right. And we have to remember he's he's a mixture. So so the fact is that though he throws the race card out far too often, and we have a bunch of pinheads out there, oftentimes they're what we call trying to whip up the race card over and over again, saying, you aren't able to say that because you're not black. I'm saying, I'm sorry, that's not a rational statement. We're all American. Are we going to, are we trying to create race wars? No. We want to not well, divide remember, and conquer, which is what these maniacs are doing. Remember what Martin Luther King said. He said, it's not the color of the skin, but the content of the character. What you've got with Obama well, I gotta, is I, someone I, I, with no character. I, I, well, I, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't make a statement that's based on that. It's not the color of the skin, it's the color of the soul. Hmm. Well, what we, know, what we know is... Yeah, he's got a pretty black soul. I mean, he, he doesn't have a white soul. This man is, is a devil. And the fact that he's doing policies that are going to directly bring Russia's nuclear and other forces directly in our back doorstep, people don't understand that he's been aggravating Putin for some time. A Russian nuclear sub showed up last summer in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, what, we're dealing with notice, here, what we're dealing with here is a, a moment where what the American people do will be decisive. And when we come back, exactly. I want to talk to you, talk to your listeners about what they can do, because we did receive a lot of phone calls last week because people are angry and they are ready to do something. And we've got to go ahead. And well, they, they should the they should be thoroughly freaked out and ready to do something. Well, welcome now. back to the back in report. report. Early, um, we talked in the last uh, time you visited about impeachment central, and it's still impeachment central and that number to contact is it's 800-922-2907 i'll give that number a couple more times a segment let me just say that last time we talked uh we talked about the importance of moving now and impeaching obama now and a large number of your listeners called in and got involved in, in the campaign now since that time, we've had some motion on the Democratic side, but we can't, look, I can't trust Diane Feinstein. She's, what she did was a, was good. Was it a patriotic reflex or just something to protect her own staffers? It doesn't matter. She opened a can of worms that we can now use. So the important point is that impeachment is now on the table on the Democratic side. Now what about Ted Cruz? What about Mike Lee? What about all these Republicans who have been talking about how Obama's impeachable, but never did a damn thing. Now is the time for them to get into it. But we've got to get the motion coming from the people. And so that's why I say, you call our office, we're impeachment central. We're coordinating this around the country. We've got Keisha's campaign. We've got LaRouche's weekly webcasts and all the things he's doing. I'm on many, many radio shows. If you want to be involved in this and get Obama out, call my office. That's 800-922-2907. We'll put you in touch with other people who are working on this in your state. Uh, give you a sense of, of where things stand, but it's 800-922-2907. And this is a call that I think is a, a no-brainer. We've never been closer to this. Obama's done all sorts of impeachable things. You know, you and I haven't even had a chance to revisit the, the atrocity of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you, you look at the NSA, Obama claims he's going to change the rules of the NSA, what he's going to do is now have the telecom companies 
be the uh, spies. I know. I mean, it's total fusion of corporate and, and government power. And then it goes further beyond the reach of Congress. And, and now we have the statements by these two Obama appointee female judges that have told Hobby Lobby what to do. Basically, cut off health insurance. Even though your Christian organization want to provide health insurance, pay the tax and to hell with you. And if your people want to join the exchange to get an abortion or an abortion drug, don't worry. The federal government taking Christian money will pay for it. Okay, this, yeah, so, this is sickening. Yeah. The, these two judges need to be impeached also. The entire rat's nest needs to be cleaned out. Well, and that's the point. We can get Obama out now because of the illegal actions that he's taken to have the intervention of the CIA against the congressional investigation. And the fact that he did it on behalf of Cheney, I can tell you, is not very popular with Democrats. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're now yeah, at a kidding. point. You're, yeah. you're a comedian, too. So, yeah. Well, we're now at a <laughs> <Not> point. popular. <laughs> yeah. We're now at a point where this guy can be taken out uh, politically, either by impeachment or just by people saying he's crazy. Let's, let's use the 25th <laughs> Amendment and take him somewhere where he's safe. So, again, the number to call is 800 Nine two 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 nine zero seven. Tell them you heard about it on Dr. Deagle's show, and we'll make sure we give you a, a full picture of what we're doing and what you can do. Yeah, and I think uh, Lewis Foundation is, uh, has a vision of what's going on. And uh, do we get weekly reports on Fridays from Lyndon LaRouche? You've got all kinds of video, uh, other articles that deal with specific things like LACUs, that those latest articles. And I'm going to post up the PDF links to those articles so people can actually pull them up and look at them. I mean, to me, it's it's hard to believe that the regular media doesn't even touch the side parts of these stories. That the but even the vast majority of the people that are into so-called patriot movement are playing around with peripheral issues when these central issues mean, do we have a civilization five or ten or twenty years from now? You well, know, they don't put things together. You know, they 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 take a little bit here and a little bit there, and and you know you get good information here and there, but we put it together because we're in the center of this. We're doing everything we can to make sure that this guy is removed so the country survives. And you know, minimally, that's what, what people who are uh, listening to your program, most of them agree with this. Yeah. But they well, just I don't, don't know where to go. Anybody that gets the actual fact, facts will understand that this is really not optional. We read up against it now. Now we see the actions of Russians. See, Russians are not the same as Americans. If Russia perceives a very dangerous threat, they're going to move three or four moves ahead and they might do a preemptive strike. They might actually place missiles in Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. That I have sources that tell me they're already in the process of doing it now, based on what Obama and the West and the European Union and the international banksters have done. This means at a future date, we're going to have that what I call the bones in the hand moment, where we're going to look up and all we're going to do with those next rays is see the bones in the last half uh, of our, you see all our bones through our hands with an X-ray with a big flash. And that's the last thing you see before you say, hello, Jesus. You know? The well, fact and, is people... and I think these are not just, we're not just being hyperbolic. We're talking about real strategic matters that right. are confronting people that most people just don't like to think about. Well, you know, they're yucky. About... I mean, they're, they're scary things. But the fact is, we are like you know, geopolitical surgeons cutting out the tumor, the Obamanoma, let's put it that way. The you Obamanoma. Have to, you have <laughs> to face your fears because if you don't face the most horrible thing that can happen, you're not prepared to fight. Now, the other thing is that when you face what's horrible, you also have to give people hope, an idea for where we can go. Look, if we removed Obama, we could take care of the economic crisis, we could take care of the political crisis, we could take care of the Syrians, the war in Syria. There are solutions to all these things. What stops the solution is the fact that the people who are causing the problem want wars, they want chaos, they want genocide, they want to reduce population. So they don't care if people get killed. They cry crocodile tears over the people of Syria while they give arms to the, the Islamic jihadists. So, you know, when you cut through the bull and get to the reality, we're dealing with what's been a takeover of our country by a financial network which is anti-American and has been trying to snuff out the American Revolution since we first won it. Yeah, exactly. 
I think also you're going to start seeing an amping up of the support that Russia does for its allies. The latest move by pulling the Israeli embassy staff, and I don't believe the lie that they say it's just because they're not being paid enough salaries. Uh, this has been a dispute going on for two years. I think the Israelis are pulling staff because they're ready to do an airborne attack against Iran with full American support. Long-range tanker bombers, our, our bunker buster nukes that can get the facility at Qum, which is the holy mountain in Qum in Iran, where the nuclear centrifuges are, are down underground. It's so deep that the Israeli bunker busters can't do a thing. And I think that Russia... If you're right about this, Bill, the, the British want a war. The people who control Obama want a war. If they can't get it over Ukraine, they'll try it over Iran. And that's why Obama, who's a puppet of these interests, has to have his finger removed from the nuclear button. Right, he shouldn't be within, is the best way. Yeah, and, he, he shouldn't be within miles of the bomb. He should actually be behind bars without any access to Internet. And so let me give that number one more time for people who didn't have a pen before. I want you to give us a call, 800-922-2907. That's the number for Impeachment Central. Give us a call. Get in the organizing with us. You know, if we can win this runoff race in uh, Texas for Senate, for Keisha, that will be a, an even bigger shock. But I think, you know, we're not looking at May 27th. I'm looking at March 26th. What can we do today to get more of an advantage toward impeachment? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that advantage, by the way, when you hear these stories today about Harry Reid and Diane Feinstein, we know that the house of cards is falling. We also know that uh, there's various financial issues. The declaration by Russia that the world reserve currency is now the renminbi, the Chinese currency, that's, whole, that's big. I mean, I don't know if you're in the closing moment here to make a comment, but I really see that Russia is basically saying, we're going to kill the petrodollar. We're going to do everything we can with all of our allies to completely destroy American financial hegemony of the world. Because that's what got Saddam Hussein killed. That's what got Saddam Hussein killed. That's what got Muammar Gaddafi killed was the attack on the petrodollar. Well, what's happening from Russia is they're saying, we're going to survive. We'd be perfectly willing to work with you, but not if you're crazy. And we're right. not and suicidal. You, and by the way, if you try to even think of attacking us, we'll be at your doorstep beheading you before you even consider the idea that it's a good idea. And so the Russians are not someone to mess around with. You threaten them, you make your actions look like you're dangerous, and they kill you. And that's what they're going to do to our economy first, is they're going to kill the dollar. And then if we decide to twitch sideways, they'll have nuclear missiles in Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Have a nice day out there. If you don't call, don't worry. Someday you'll have that bones in a hand moment. 800-922-2907. 800-922-2907. Call today. See you next week.